All right, Mr. Palmer here. Gonna, got a video on linked lists. So before we go through this video, make sure you remember the difference between static and dynamic data structures. Uh, just waiting for you to go through your notes right there. And let's kick off. So uh, this one's obviously about linked lists. As I said, what I'm going to go through in here is what a linked list is and go through the pros and cons of using linked lists. Therefore, you should understand why we actually use them as a data structure. So the best way to visualize a linked list is something like this, where you have your different data items. Each of the data items point to the next data item in the list. OK, there's a bit of terminology you need to familiarize yourself with him with here. Sorry. So the first thing is this is a data item. Uh, some people will call it the payload. All right. Each of so each node consists of two things. The first part there is the data item. The second part is this bit down here, which is the pointer. The pointer points to the next node in the list. OK, so the great thing about linked lists is that they are not stored contiguously in memory. OK, so what does that mean? Uh, basically, each of the element, the nodes are not stored near each other. And that means that uh, the pointer can point to different memory addresses uh, in order to link the different eight data items together in the correct sequence. So if I want to define a linked list, the first thing I'm going to say that is a dynamic data structure that's holding data in a sequence. OK, however, those data items are not stored contiguously. So if we think about the mailboxes of memory, usually if we think about the organization of a program in memory, that blue block refers to the instructions that belong to the program. And then the orange blocks refer to the array that might the data structure there, that static data structure, which was declared as a part of that program. OK, all they're stored contiguously one after the other in memory. Uh, in terms of a linked list, all right, I might have the instructions for my program. Then I've got like data one, so my first node, which consists of data and a pointer. That points to something else, which is somewhere else, which points to the next thing, which points to something somewhere else, which then might point somewhere else. So you can see that although data one, data two, data three are near each other, the next thing that comes is data 10, because actually I might have deleted that item and set another item somewhere else, etc., etc. So there are all those data items in the sequence are not stored next to each other in memory anymore. OK, so um, as I said, each node then therefore contains the data field and a pointer to the next item. And the final thing that really needs to be um, uh, remembered, especially when you're implementing a linked list, which we're going to go over in the next video, is that you need to have a pointer associated with the, uh, with the list, which is going to point to the first node. OK, um, you may also have a pointer which points to the last node. Uh, obviously, you need to point to the first node because you need to know where you're going to start the sequence um, from. All right. So the pros and cons of linked lists basically is the datums are not stored contiguously. It's actually easier to write your code because if you compare using a linked list to an array, uh, when you write an array, you need to know how big an array is and therefore you need to declare it straight, um, you know, when you write your program, then you run into problems where some languages, for example, don't allow you to redefine the dimensions of an array. It's easy to update. Um, because you don't, because the data is not stored contiguously, basically you can, you know that inserting a node, removing a node is going to take a constant number of operations. If you are working with an array, um, so for example, if you've done an insertion sort in an array, you know how difficult it is when you want to insert an item somewhere in the array, then you need to shuffle everything else up and down the array. Okay. Um, you don't have that problem with linked lists because of the way nodes just point to the next item in the sequence, wherever it is stored in the memory. All right. The con of a linked list is that you can't directly access the data item. If you compare a linked list to an array, then you know that as long as you have the index, you can jump straight in and get that element at that item. OK, with a linked list, you need to traverse the entire list to get to the particular item that you're looking for. And so that therefore obviously is going to increase the overhead when you're looking for a particular data item, performing some kind of search or when you want to insert an item. Obviously, um, those of you who are thinking will have realized that you can't use a binary search when you're using a linked list because you have to traverse the list from beginning to end. So you are going to have to use a serial search, a linear search to um, retrieve your data items. And that's it. OK. Um, oh, yeah. So you once you've got a linked list, basically you can use a linked list to then create other data items such as stacks, queues, etc. OK. Um, that's it.
All right, so you should know what a linked list is and you should be able to think about why they're useful and what problems they have and basically then take that into the context of other data structures and think about actually why would you use a particular data structure for a particular purpose in a program. All right, next video coming up will be about how to create a basic linked list in uh, whatever language you're using and then following that some algorithms for adding and removing nodes.